Apart from the ubiquitous rusty bit of metal, corrosion appears in many different forms. And it is important to be able to recognise these different types of corrosion and how they arise from the different underlying processes. Before we start, let's look at some definitions. Formally, corrosion is the physical chemical interaction process or mechanism that results in damage to a material. Corrosion damage is the result of a corrosion process and corrosion protection is how we can modify the system to reduce the corrosion damage. Under ambient conditions, that is around room temperature, corrosion is caused by reaction with water. Strictly, the electrochemical corrosion process requires water to dissolve or solvate metal and other ions. Mechanical effects interacting with corrosion can also cause certain types of important damage. I've listed some examples where corrosion damage might be expected here, but I'm sure you can think of many other examples yourselves. Corrosion also occurs at high temperatures where liquid water is not available for reaction. Under these circumstances, the main interaction is between the metal and a reactive gas or a molten salt. Generally, different types of corrosion are classified under six main headings. General corrosion, localised corrosion, microbially influenced corrosion, flow assisted corrosion, environmental cracking, and high temperature oxidation. In this presentation, we'll go through each of these in turn, hopefully showing you some interesting images to illustrate the processes involved. General corrosion is the most familiar form of corrosion, where corrosion occurs over the entire surface while it gradually gets more and more rough. This type of corrosion can be measured as an average corrosion rate and allows lifetimes to be predicted and corrosion allowances to be calculated. Galvanic corrosion is a form of general corrosion driven by two different metals. The more active metal, or anode, corrodes to protect the more noble metal, or cathode. We can use this idea to protect metals from corrosion in practice using sacrificial anodes such as aluminium or, as in the picture, zinc galvanising to protect steel from corrosion. Although in this image, much of the zinc has dissolved, leaving the steel to get rusty. Galvanic corrosion is an example of how the corrosion or electrochemical process is like a dry cell or rechargeable battery. The voltage between the positive and negative terminals in a battery correspond to the reactions of reduction and oxidation. Corrosion can occur when there is a pathway for the current to flow and when water and oxygen as reactants are available. So in principle, corrosion can be controlled by restricting the supply of reactants and the flow of current. How active a metal is can be measured using a galvanic series. In this example, the more active metals, magnesium, zinc, etc., are at the top of the table, while the more noble metals, gold, copper, etc., are at the bottom. While general corrosion occurs all over a metal surface, localised corrosion happens mainly in isolated spots, with the rest of the metal surface essentially unaffected. So the anodes are confined to local spots of corrosion, while the rest of the metal surface is a cathode. Often this type of corrosion occurs on normally shiny or passive metals like aluminium or stainless steel. Here you can see two examples of pitting corrosion. On the left is a boiler tube that has suffered from internal pitting damage. The external weld repair is clearly ineffective. While the image on the right shows typical spots of pitting on stainless steel. In both cases, the majority of the metal surface is uncorroded or passive. Another example of localised corrosion occurs where the availability of oxygen is restricted, for example, in the crevice between two mating surfaces. This form of corrosion is more common on passive metals like stainless steel and aluminium 
although it can occur on any surface. Both examples here show crevice corrosion of stainless steel. In one case underneath a bolt head, and in the second on a badly made weld between a flange and a pipe. Corrosion can also occur in crevices underneath deposits of corrosion products, silt, dirt, scales, and even bacterial colonies. In such cases, it is often known as under-deposit attack. Crevice corrosion can occur underneath colonies or biofilms of bacteria and fungi. However, many microbial and fungal species produce corrosive substances as they grow, which can attack metals, and this is called microbially influenced corrosion. A common form of soil microbe is called sulphate-reducing bacteria. These are the ones that make rotten egg gas, hydrogen sulphide, in stagnant water and waterlogged ground. Unfortunately, hydrogen sulphide is extremely corrosive to iron, steel and many other metals, as can be seen in the holes caused by this damage on the left-hand side. The right-hand image is slightly more unusual. This is where colonies of fungi grow and produce acetic acid, and the acetic acid corrodes away the aluminium. Although corrosion on its own can cause severe damage to components and materials, in some circumstances the combination of corrosion and mechanical stresses can result in devastating failures. Generally, these are known as chemomechanical damage and can make otherwise ductile materials quite brittle. In the wrong circumstances, benign environments, like tap water, can cause otherwise corrosion-resistant materials, like stainless steel, to fail by cracking. The most important of the chemomechanical phenomena is known as stress corrosion cracking. This requires a susceptible material, a tensile stress, and a specific aggressive environment. For stainless steel, the presence of even small amounts of chloride ions from salt in the water can result in the sort of damage shown in a picture. Each of the vertical brown lines is a crack resulting in a leak out of the pipe and the stresses from bending the pipe to shape during manufacture have contributed to this failure. Metal fatigue is caused by repeated cyclic stresses that result in the slow growth of cracks, eventually leading to component failure. Fatigue cracks grow much faster in a corrosive environment, however, and this process is known as corrosion fatigue. You can generally tell the two processes apart because in corrosion fatigue, the broken or fracture surface is covered with corrosion product. Here, part of a ship's propeller has broken off due to corrosion fatigue. And the part of the crack before it broke is covered with dark corrosion product from the bronze copper alloy. Flow corrosion or erosion corrosion can be caused by a number of processes including cavitation, which is more of a mechanical effect, where gas bubbles entrained in a fluid implode where they move from a low-pressure region to a high-pressure region and cause damage, commonly in pumps, as shown in the image here. The other main type of corrosion is called flow-assisted corrosion, where the rapid flow of the fluid results literally in the top protective layers of the metal being pulled away. In this example, flow corrosion in a power station cooling water tube has caused severe damage and ultimate leaking. So far, we have focused on corrosion in ambient conditions, close to normal temperatures and pressures. However, at higher temperatures, liquid water is no longer available, and the corrosion damage process involves direct reaction between the metal and a reactive gas such as oxygen, steam, carbon monoxide, sulphur dioxide, etc. Molten salt corrosion can also occur when solid deposits such as salt melt at very high temperatures, generally more than 900 to 1000 degrees Celsius. Most examples of failure due to gas metal reaction or high temperature oxidation occur in engines and boilers, etc. Here a boiler steam tube, which has been heated by a gas flame on its outside, has oxidized, losing metal thickness in the process. Eventually, 
The remaining metal is too thin to support the internal steam pressure and the tube fails explosively in this characteristic failure pattern. Here again is a summary of the various different types of corrosion that I have covered. Don't worry if you don't remember them all. The main point of this presentation and to show you that corrosion isn't just all about rust. And finally, here are some useful links that you can look into for further information.